Oh, awesome. Guys, welcome into the stream. I hope everything's working out. Hope you're having an awesome Tuesday. It's Billy C. Um, we're going to smash some bets over on the Odds GM and A Train Station uh, on their both softwares today. Also, it's Dinger Tuesday for FanDuel. Uh, also, we got prize picks, uh, Taco Tuesdays. We got a lot going on, so we're going to hit some different bets. Big shout out to Scotty V, uh, welcoming you into the OGs. Guys, um, I've unlocked recently channel memberships. If you want to support the channel or go above and beyond to support the channel, I have two awesome levels, one being DGEN at $1.99 a month, one being OG at $4.99 a month. By no means do you have to, but appreciate you guys. Um, appreciate Scotty joining in. So that's one of the first housekeeping notes. The second one is, let me go ahead and minimize me. To make this a little easier for you guys in the beginning, um, these are the bankroll settings. So we're over here on Odds Jam. Just going to go to your profile and then down to bankroll settings just so you guys know what I'm rocking with. It's a $35,000 bankroll. We're using the 0.25 uh, Kelly multiplier. So that's the first thing. So just so you guys kind of know what we're going with. I was talking to a buddy of mine on Sunday. We were watching the Masters together, and he brought up an interesting way, like the way that he likes to use the divigging methods. So over here on the right-hand side, when we click this, usually I'm always on multiplicative, the default, um, but he also likes to use additive. So I created two different filters. So basically, we're going to use multiplicative, which I'm on right now, um, and we're going to use this for the minus 250 to plus 140 odds range, okay? We were talking that he said the additive, um, multiplicative, excuse me, multiplicative is not super sharp. Once you get above plus 140 odds, they, it doesn't really know how to uh, grade them out in terms of an EV percentage. And he says that additive does a much better job. So what I did then is I went over and created a filter called additive right here, whenever it wants to open up for me. And then I just changed the odds to plus 141 up to plus 250. And then all you would have to do is then just come over here and click over on additive. But for today, we're going to mostly stick with multiplicative. Um, it's a tongue twister for me. I can't really say it. Um, Jackson, any solid flip plays currently? My man. Let's take a look and see right now. Let me hit refresh here and see if we got anything popping up at the moment. When I go down and scroll and look for fliff. No, not at least on the Odds Jam Plus EV tool. Um, another way, if you want to like search for Fliff, and if you're not really sure, uh, if maybe nothing pops up on the Plus EV tool, I'll just go down here to Low Holds, and then you could do two. Th you could go about this two different ways. One, you could come up here. You could type in Penny. This is just going to show everything, and it never works on the first time. You always have to do it the second time. And basically, right here, you can just look then to see if, like, right here, Jose Quintana on his strikeouts, right? So minus 135. If you've a video I dropped yesterday talking about Fandle and, and mainline pitcher strikeouts, they're very sharp. So Fandle likes this minus 138, minus 201 at Pinnacle. Oh boy, minus 170 at Bet Online. So, right here off the hop, this is a play that I'm going to go smash. Um, obviously, I love it because I'm, I'm from Pittsburgh, a huge Pirates fan. So Quintana, old bucko to go under five and a half. This is really good, really sharp to pinnacle and bet online. But as you can see, it's not on the positive EV page. But sometimes you can find sharp plays going over the low holds page. Um, guys, for baseball this year, um, I'm going to kind of go back and forth. Um, Waldo, just so you know, man, my filters are for multiplicative is going to be minus 250 to plus 140. Uh, for baseball season, guys, I am going to, early on, really cut my bets in half because, like I've met, if you've seen before, my last two baseball seasons, I've done terrible, not well at all. Here's Quintana under five and a half. So I'm not going to get crazy. The most I'll put is probably $100 on this. When it comes to NBA plays, NBA is probably my best sport. I've been betting it for the entire season. I have a sound strategy. I'm going to put way more right now on NBA plays than I would baseball plays. So here's the first play, Quintana. Under five and a half Ks uh, over on Fliff. So for my Fliff users, check that out there. Uh, Max, Billy, I ran one of your strategy videos a year ago. Ran with the strategy and haven't looked back since. I've had nothing but phenomenal results, and I have only you to thank. You changed my... Oh, well, thank you, Max. I really appreciate that. Um, 
yeah, I'm assuming it's the it's not the strategy betting strategy I'm using now, but one that I used for six months that worked really well, where you kind of go off of the no vig fair odds and then you put a percentage of your bankroll one unit size on those plays. So I really appreciate that, Max. This would probably be, if memory serves me correct, maybe ninety to eighty percent of your one unit would would go on this play. Um, Scotty, what's going on, man? Nice to have you in. Scotty recently joined uh, channel memberships. Really appreciate you. Uh, all right, so already right off the hop, like you can see that like on the positive EV tool, this Quintana play didn't show up. And appreciate Jackson for asking for some flip plays because next thing you know, uh, we go over to the low holds page. This is one way to do it. Or if you scroll back up to the top and then you just type in flip, right? Maybe Pinnacle, you don't always have to use Pinnacle as a guide. Sometimes it's just really easy to see. So like Brady Kachuk right here. Um, this wouldn't be one of those because... For me, at Sahara Bets, you could get this. Though this is a sharp play in general. Brady Kachuk tonight for the Senators to not score a goal. Um, you know, like minus 201, minus 200, minus 220. Sahara Bets is an Arizona-based book, so I understand many don't have it. That's really sharp, though, over at Fliff to get that at minus 160. I really like that. Uh, that's, that's a really, that's something here, too. So, but this is just another way, guys. You can also just go to the low holds page, click Fliff. You're going to want to use the low holds page this summer because there isn't going to be a lot out there to bet on right now. And you are going to have to get creative to find sharp plays. Um, also look at this as, well, if everyone's at the positive EV screen, how can I maybe find some other bets that maybe some people aren't looking at? And the low holds page is great. The low holds page is created just like this right here. Um, if you had, let's say, you know, like this is FanDuel plus 160, minus 160. So if you wanted to bet both sides, you're not going to win or lose any money. This is a great strategy for offshore sports book rollover requirements. Or if you have a Caesars or DraftKings account and you want to just accrue rewards points, this is why you would use the low holds page because you're just going to bet both sides. You're not winning or losing any money. It's like taking money from your checking account and moving it over to your savings account. It's just a transfer of funds. Um, and also, if you may, and this is an, another easy way instead of withdrawing funds from offshore books, if you want to try to quickly uh, move money from your offshore books to your domestic American books, yeah, the bet could lose, but try to find plays where the, right here, the offshore book is the heavy underdog, the domestic book's the heavy favorite. That's an easy way to kind of move money in between funds. So, you know, if you have a rollover requirement with bet online and you know those funds are frozen, then try to find some low holds bets where they're the big underdog and DraftKings is the favorite. And then that can move that money over to DraftKings kind of easy. So that's a way to do in a kind of a bank transfer without having to actually, uh, withdraw any funds. All right, I'm gonna go back over to um, the positive EV page. Chess and gambling, do you use Circa or Heritage as a short book? Yes, I reference uh, Circa quite a bit. Um, not so much for college basketball, which that doesn't make, you know, doesn't mean much to you now because it's over. I don't reference them as much for college basketball, but I do for um, some other plays. The plays that you see on my screen, guys, um, Certain books I'm severely limited on, so I kind of leave certain books up for you guys. If I would open up Bally Bet, Unibet, and Bet Rivers, this play in Di Desert Diamond, this page would be flooded with player prop bets right now. Um, so let's take a look at this Trace Jackson Davis, Warriors Kings. It's nice to know, at least right now in the NBA, like everyone's playing for something, so you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, starters resting. This is really nice. So, as you can see, another pro tip, guys. You're always going to want to have Golden Nugget as one of your books that shows you plus EV page. Here's plus EV plays. Here's why. Because Golden Nugget typically mirrors DraftKings. And sometimes DraftKings plays won't pop up. Odds Jam just won't show the play. But you'll see Golden Nugget on their will. And you'll be like, oh, well, if I see Golden Nugget, then that means more times than not, DraftKings has the same odds. So... Here is my process in, terming, uh, in terms of how I would determine if this is a sharp play. Odds Jam says it's a sharp play, but I want to figure out if it is. Joey, what's going on, man? So one thing I didn't do in yesterday's stream, by the way, guys, I'm going to be doing another stream on Friday, same time. I'll announce it on the channel, but trying to get at least two streams in a day. So we're going to take the best odds here, the average odds. I'm going to throw this into the money machine. 
Uh, I'm going to move myself uh, so that I pop up way up here. So same thing, guys, 35,000 bankroll, 25%. This is from A-Train Station. This is one of his old models. I still use it to this day. I just think it's really helpful. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to take the best odds and then the average odds. So 104 one, minus 102. And then I'm going to go back because I can't remember the odds. It's 116, 116. Oh, not yet. 116, 116. So, right, these are the best odds. These are the average odds. And now I'm going to reference a couple sharp sports books like Bet Online so, and Pinnacle. These are the two books that I'm going to lean on. So, 100, 130. And then I'm also going to then Pinnacle's odds are 123, 108. Okay. And at the end of the day, guys, this is just how I calculate the Novig fair odds. We're trying to figure out what the fair price is. That's really how, how we can determine if we have an edge. So this is one of those instances where the money machine thinks that the plus 104 odds has value. So they think that the play over at FanDuel actually has more of an edge than at DraftKings, right? So, and the reason being is Odds Jam, if you click on this purple calculator, they have the win percentage here at the fair win, the no big fair odds at 51 51. So if we go to a calculator, and I know I'm spending a lot of time on this first play, but I'm just trying to help explain. I hope this help breaks down the process a little bit. So if you type in here 51.51, their no big fair odds is minus 106. The money machine has the no big fair odds really at 102 minus 102. So that's why they have more emphasis on the over. So I'm going to listen to the money machine here. I am going to bet this over on FanDuel right now. So I'm going to take the over on Trace Jackson Davis. No problem at all if you feel more comfortable taking the under here. This is just a process that I use with his money machine time and time again. And this is just what I like to do. Again, guys, this is one play. This can easily win or easily lose. But the more times you kind of go through this process, this is how you're going to become profitable. So I already have FanDuel pulled up. It's Dinger Tuesdays. I'm excited about that. We're going to hit some... Uh, long shot home run plays every Tuesdays, Dinger Tuesdays for baseball season on FanDuel. It's an awesome promo that they run. So we're just going to go uh, over here to NBA, look at the Warriors game, and then go to player rebounds and trace, show more. Here it is. Plus 102 and son of a gun, the odds already changed. So from plus 104 to plus 102, means that there isn't an edge anymore. And so I'm not going to bet this over at DraftKings. The edge just solely disappeared. And I know it's a really small amount, guys. If you really like this play on the over, feel free. But, you know, since I'm data-based and I really go off the price that we're getting, I'm just going to ignore this and move along. So we'll click refresh. If you're just tuning in now, guys, welcome into the stream. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Um... Just going through some different plays. I'm not gonna put. I'm not gonna hit these plays on BetMGM because they're not gonna let me bet anything. Um, I will though take a look though at this Orioles play right here. Um, we might put together maybe a same. I'll definitely put a same game parlay right now for Reeves and Davis. But I want to look at this Orioles run line play right here minus one and a half. Bet DSI is an offshore sports book to uh, chess and gambling daily. This is where I am going to reference Circa. So again, we're going to do the same process, take the best odds, average odds. We're going to take Bet Online, Bookmaker, Circa, and Pinnacle's odds. Um, and this is just going to tell me what I should bet on it. It's the clear outlier right now, though, at plus 130. Nobody else is offering odds that good. So I just want to know what I should put on this um, just to give you guys an idea of the process. So we're going to put this in right here. So minus 125, plus 130. And just have to bear with me as I do a little clicking back and forth. 142, 118. Now, over at A-Train Station, he kind of already has this baked into his software, so I don't have to do this anymore. Um, but I like to do this on Odds Jam just to find out. So we're going to look at Bet Online's odds and Bookmaker's odds. Guys, if you want to know how I actually have these books available to me, it's because I had the Platinum plan with Odds Jam. So it allows me to, to, to use this. If you, if you have the global plan or under... Uh, you can still use Pinnacle as a reference, which is a really good reference to use. So um, let's go clicking too much. Minus 138, 118. 
And the more books that I have to reference, the more confident that I have in a play because you're just, it's just more references. I feel I just have way more confidence. 35, 17, 31, 19. I probably already screwed that up, didn't you? Yeah, 35, 17. <laughs> and then minus 131, 119. So right here, as you can see, we have a 2.16% edge. But when it comes to mainline plays, why, why are we putting so much on this on just a small amount? Because the market width is so tight. The tighter the market width, you can see the weighted average right here on this money machine. It's an even higher weight when we have a lower market width. More, more, less market width means more confidence in the sports books. And when we, this is a mainline run play, so we're going to want to smash this. But I'm going to chop this number in half because, like I said, with baseball, I'm just very playing it very conservative. So 275, I'll put like probably 130 bucks on this. So let me go over to Bet DSI and let's hit this. I use offshore books every day, guys, as you start to get limited with domestic sports books. Um, offshore books are great. Um, they also don't limit you nearly as much unless you are XBet or my bookie. Those are the only two that really do that. So let's go here because I know on the stream they're going to let me go down here to the bottom. And then right here, and you know, because I do too much talking, uh, right here, this this is already now at plus 115. So the edge is gone, which is a real shame. So it's kind of dropped down to everyone else. Um, I could throw this in at plus 125 on here to see. So what I would do is just change this to 125, and there's, there's no edge. So... Um, but this is the process, and if that was plus 130, then over on Bet DSI, I would absolutely go after that. But we're not, the price isn't as good. There isn't an edge over the books. So I don't bet it just to bet it. I just simply say, okay, no bueno, I'll move along. Joey asks, will MGM give you higher limits or do you do a parlay? So Bet MGM is not terrible with mainline plays with player props. It's terrible. I can't get anything down. But with NBA like spreads, they'll still let me bet up to like $118, which is which is really solid. I'll take that. So if you like this, guys, for BetMGM, Draymond under on his assist. This is just a clear outlier, BetMGM, compared to the rest of the books. This is a sharp one. Also on this Trey Murphy. Um I don't I don't understand why Odds Jam is, is referencing this one because it's a one cent difference to Pinnacle. Um, and so if we believe the pinnacle is really sharp, then okay. Uh, this would be one where then maybe you would just say, we're getting a better price than the rest of the market. This is a good play. I don't really like this one though as much, just simply looking at the market. But one thing that we are going to do for me, uh, to get a little bit of my fix in, we're going to hit a same game parley on Sahara bets. Um, right now with Reeves and Anthony Davis, let me go ahead and pop that open. Um, they have Sahara Betts is a specific book out here in Arizona. So when we look at Austin Reeves, um, pretty good price at Hard Rock and Fliff compared to the rest of the market here. 129 on Pinnacle, 144 on the over for Bet Online. So we like this. Obviously, I'm getting a great price here, but still, this is a great play on Fliff. Um, I know Hard Rock's pretty limited to certain states. Not everyone has that, so Fliff would be a great spot to go with. And then on Anthony Davis. Um, yeah, I mean, minus 158 on Pinnacle for his over on his rebounds, minus 165 on Bet Online. I mean, look at DraftKings and FanDuel up in the minus 180s. And again, see Ben and GM, not too shabby of a price. Caesars and Fliff, these were all be all be books that I would look to go after if you don't have Sahara Bet, you're not located in the desert. So let's go ahead and put a same game parlay together. And um, I'm going to Bet as much as they'll let me bet, which is probably like $130, somewhere between $130 to $125. Scotty, sorry if you cover this. Do you still use your method from a while back where you apply a certain... Uh, no, I don't. I don't anymore, Scotty. And it's not that it's a bad method. It's just that I've kind of fully, have fully dove in into the Kelly Criterion method. So my method now is usually running every play through this money machine here up from A-Train Bets. Uh, it's a lot of manual work, but I like to use it because I like to figure out what the no vig. I trust the no vig fair odds from the money machine more than odds jam, especially when odds jam is now going through a bunch of different devigging methods that you can choose from. This is just a simpler process for me. It's worked for me now for over six months. I really like that. Um, 
All right, so we're taking Day, uh, Reeves over four and a half assists, Davis over four and a half rebounds. So we go to the Laker game. We have to go to the SGP same game parlay. So Reeves and assist, and then Davis on his rebounds. So ba -ba 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 -ba, here he is, Austin Reeves over four and a half. And then on rebounds, where's AD at? AD's right here. Over 12 and a half. I just double check the odds real quick to make sure that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And same game parlay selections can't be combined. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm in the same game parlay. How how can you say that these aren't these aren't allowed? Thank you. All right, so let's put 150, see if they'll accept it. Um, ooh. Reeves' assist changed to minus 115 on me, but as we already previously discussed, it's still an awesome price. Even if it's now at minus 115, books like Bet Online and Pinnacle have this so high, I still really like it. So we're going to bet this. And they're going to let me bet $134, so we'll do that. So there we are. This is a play that I'm on. Now, you would say, Billy, you never like to bet parlays. Like, why, why would you bet parlays? I would, if I could, bet this as a straight wager. But if I wanted to just bet D'Angelo Russell over on his points and I wanted to put $100 down it on Sahara bets, they won't let me bet this, okay? So then I'll say, oh, okay, well, they won't let me bet this. And then watch this. If I try to bet $5, they won't let me bet $5, right? So, okay, I can't bet this straight. I know I can't bet player props straight on this site. They... Um, when you combine two sharp plays like Reeves and AD together, both plays that have an edge, and you throw them in a parlay, those are the types of parlays that you want to play because then you're compounding the gains exponentially, and that's why parlays can be very powerful. The reason that I say don't bet parlays is because most people don't line shop. They don't grab plays that have an edge, and so that's negative expected value. And when you have negative expected value, just like how I mentioned the compounds – Everything compounds exponentially on a plus EV parlay. It's the exact opposite negatively for those types of parlays. So um, that's why I'm putting together this parlay right here. So when I look at Sahara Bets now for player props, I only try to do same game parlays because that's all they'll let me do. Waldo asks, if I only have global books now, do you recommend the Fantasy Optimizer? <sighs> yes, um, I think it's a solid tool. I haven't found a ton of success myself with prize picks and underdog. I haven't found the key to it yet. I also don't spend the, as much time with the Fantasy Optimizer maybe as I should. We're going to put together a couple slips today. Um, correlation in general is dead. It's still alive in some parts with baseball and hockey. But... I would focus more on maybe some of the esports. You can still get some action down. But whatever, if you want to use the optimizer, try it out. Just, just be very conservative, uh, Waldo, I would say with that. You want to be very conservative. All right. We're about 24, 25 minutes, guys. I'm going to flip over to A-Train Station to kind of give you guys an example of what that looks like right now. Um, it's completely different than Odds Jam. It's an Odds Jam user, A Train Station. If you're familiar with his content, he created his own software because he thought I can make something better than Odds Jam. I'll have a link in the description after the stream ends, guys, of um, uh, a link if you want to save 10% off. He doesn't offer a free trial right now. This software has only been around for four months now. So, right here, um, we're going to take a look. So how this works is um, basically the top EV percentage play right over here, this 10.5%. It's then going to go and show everything down from here in terms of just for this particular game, and then we're going to go up here. Interesting, the Brady Singer strikeout prop. So the video I just dropped talked about the strikeouts prop right here. Um, also, um, if it's in green, like you see this, this number is in green, that means that Pinnacle has odds for this. So some people like this view. This is It's a little tougher to see, but basically we have all the books right here. We're looking for, I believe, his under, sorry, over five and a half strikeouts. So this green bar represents what we're getting. He sees this no big fair odds at plus 139.9. We get it at plus 158 at FanDuel. If I went over to Odds Jam, went up to the Royals game, 
sometimes it's just a little easier to show you guys um, for pitcher strikeouts just how it looks. So here's Brady Singer. And yeah, I mean, this is a clear outlier. It's funny that the Plus EV page didn't show this to us because sometimes it doesn't. For odds jam, I don't know why, but A Train sees it. But you can see right here, Pinnacle has this at plus one thirteen. It's plus one nineteen at Bet Online, plus one fifty eight. So the main line, in my opinion, for Fanduel would be Singer on his over four and a half, just like Bet Online has the odds here. So this is an alternate line, and we're going to want to pounce on this guy. So if I go back to the station, it's going to tell me that I should wager four hundred and twenty dollars on this play. I'm not going to do that. Um, but I'll probably sprinkle maybe 50 to $75 down on this. If you're asking how I came up with that number, um, I'm just trying to keep things under $100 right now with baseball for the most part. And this is obviously a little bit of a longer shot. So we just got to go down here. We got to go to his alternate strikeouts for him to get six, right? Over five and a half. It's plus 158. I'm interested to find out since I have, what, $3,600 in Fandle. If I try to bet three grand, they're going to let me bet $75.90 as a max. So we'll take the $75. So there we go. Uh, Singer to get the strikeouts. So I'll put this in the bet tracker right here for 75 bucks. And then uh, for the station, I'll just put this as well. And then I'll put limited by FanDuel here so it knows. That's kind of a cool thing. Obviously, this notes section is awesome. If you wanted to put any notes down, you can kind of find out. Yeah, he. Um, I know A-Train's always consistent with his live streams in the morning. He's solid. Um, I've, I've watched quite a few of them. And uh, I, he's he's, he's, a, he's a, much more intelligent than I am in terms of just data analytics and software. He's a really, really sharp guy. So when we come back to the station, guys, the only thing that's a bugaboo for me is I have to change this to uh, 150. Also, talking to some different users that use the station, I want you guys to make to be aware of this. If I go into settings right now, here's my bankroll again, 35,000, 25 multiplier. I round up $5. But we're using worst case to VIG method. I was on multiplicative, but apparently a lot of users right now for the station like to use worst case. Um, so we're going to try that out. I don't really have a definition for you of what that all entails, but we're going to try it out. Um, so every time though I come back, I just have to change this to 150 so I can kind of clear out some of the other stuff here. So if the number is in green right here, like this 13, that means that Pinnacle uh, has odds for it. As you can see, we bet the $75. It shows up here. If it's in white, Pinnacle does not have odds for this. But I still think it's very interesting. So we look at Jeremy Pena for the Astros uh, just to get a single. So for him to get a base hit. So this is one where, you know, Pinnacle doesn't have odds for this. But I scroll down a little bit more so you can see everything. But Fandle is just way off compared to the rest of the market. And this is one where I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit down right now because I want some exposure to this. And this is just simply a case of picking off the outlier. Fandle, maybe they are really sharp on singles. I don't know. I know they're really sharp on mainline pitcher strikeouts, but um, it, it's it's hard to say if they are for singles. But I I want some exposure to this. This is a, it's a good play. So Braves Astros, and then it's not going to be for him to get a hit. It's going to be for singles. So I got to come up here probably to batter props, and then we are going to go down to to hit a single down here. And then I'm gonna to go to my man, Jeremy Pena at minus 105. And I'm just gonna be really conservative on this and just throw 50 bucks on it right now. But there we go. So over at the station, I'll just change this to $50. Um, it's just me betting baseball the last two years, guys. I've just, it hasn't went well. And I, and I look at sports betting guys there he is. A Train's in the building. The one and only. Welcome in. Um, it's it's not that I don't trust A Train's process or the data. It's that I'm kind of a, as he would say, a coward. And I um I've gotten really lost a lot of money in baseball. And I look at sports betting from season to season. 
So I know MBA is my bread and butter. I've done very well with that. I have a lot of confidence in the strategy that I'm using. With baseball, it's early in the season and I don't have a lot of confidence. So I'm not just going to keep betting the same unit sizes, right? I know that football and baseball and basketball I'm really sound in. Baseball I'm not. So I'm just going to play it safe, play it conservative. There's This isn't a get rich, get greedy type deal. This is, hey, I'm going to be gambling next baseball season two and the season after that. So let's walk before we run and let's get some confidence. So um, we're going to just take another look here. So right away, I'll leave this open here for the plus 250 guys. It's not something that I go after, but like Duncan Robinson here could be a play. Um, I'm going to go after some different ones. So like, ooh, speaking of fliff, under nine for the Guardians and the Red Sox. Um, this is really interesting. So what you're going to see like with mainline plays, guys, um, really love this. A very low hold percentage. This is awesome. Um, Logan, what's going on? Uh, Logan, man, what's going on? Nice. Glad you can join the stream. You're going to see when it comes to mainline plays, guys, if we can find just the slightest edge, you're going to see a large recommended bet size. And that all ties to this hold percentage, the market width, the tighter, the more confidence the sports books have. We don't need to have a massive amount of EV to put a lot of money down on a play. So right here, just on the under nine, like Fliff is just off compared to the rest of the market. So I should have Fliff pulled up right here. And let's go over and let's take a look at this Red Sox game and the alternate run line under nine. It's not run line, alternate total score. And so I moved a little too slow. It's at minus 165 now, but that's okay. That's because I'm just yammering on right now, but that's okay. But that's that's kind of where um, that's where you'll see that you might only see maybe a one and a half or two percent edge on maybe a mainline play, and you're wondering, well, why is that? And that's because um, and that's because uh, you know you don't need that big of an edge. For my man uh, Terry, just so you know, man. <clears throat> oh, appreciate that, dude. Ooh. So I don't have to change it every single time? Dude. And change to open to a different window? Oh, different window. Terry, lot. thank you. Terry, oh, see? Oh, that's very, very helpful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so we can now go in and I can just uh, set it up to 150 here and we'll hit apply and then we'll go in. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so looking at this Warriors game, there's some there's some value out here, especially on uh, Fandle for Draymond on his rebounds. Ooh, we like this. Um, so looking at Draymond, scroll down here to the rest of the books. Um, if you don't want to bet this on Fandle, guys, you know someone like Bet Rivers and Unibet they work off the same odds maker. It's you know can be odds maker book. Um, that's a really sharp play. So we're going to go over here and bet Draymond over eight and a half rebounds uh, at plus money uh, for the NBA game. And then I definitely want to go ahead and uh, hit on the Dinger Tuesday, and then we'll definitely put together a uh, a um, DFS slip for Taco Tuesdays. We don't want to miss out on Taco Tuesdays. So you just come down here to play your rebounds. Um, it's not Draymond's main line. It's usually when you find value, guys, it's not always really going to be with main line sometimes with player props. You're just going to go to the alternate lines. And we need him to get, you got to go down to his actual alternate rebounds for his line that they have set up. And it's plus 116. Let's double check this. Not anymore. Okay. So there you go. So that's how fast. And Fandle is known to kind of move a little faster than most. That's okay. Um, that's just the way it goes. You just, just keep moving on. All right. So... Let me go back and let's see. Mm -hmm. Trey Murphy under four and a half boards. Oh, yeah. So like the under right here, like Bet Online has this under at plus 104. Um, we can get this at plus 134. Let's see if that's the case. Pelicans, Lakers, rebounds. It's Trey Murphy. He's under five and a half, so then we'd have to go down to his actual, boom, he's all the way at the bottom here, under four and a half, plus 134. Oh, yeah, let's let's hop on this guy right now. Um, I'm not going to go through the calculation. We'll see if we can put 150 down on this. They'll let me put $149.30. $149 
and move the plus 124. I still want exposure to this though. It's a good bet. So I'll just throw a hundred dollars on this right now. Uh, still really a good, a good play there. Um, so then we'll go ahead and throw this in the station at plus 124. And then it says use 270. I wish I could, but I was limited. So boom, click save bet. And there we go. Let's go ahead and find, find another play. Yeah, Waldo, we'll do a bet for offshore books, man. I have a little rollover I have to work over with BetUS and uh, BetDSI. I know the station has BetUS. Um, let's see if we can just type in Bet. Yeah, so here, just type in BetUS. Love this about the tool. It's so intuitive. So right here, if I just type in BetUS, um, this under on this German Bundesliga soccer match, which is for the 21st, which is five days away, I never have any issues placing bets five days in advance. They really like this under... Was this under two and a half? Yeah, we got a nice little edge right here. So let me go ahead and log into BetUS, and then we'll go ahead and find this play. Um, one thing that's why I like about the station, you're going to see more plays pop up on the station for BetUS, in my opinion. Not so much with Odds Jam, unless you, you're manually hunting these plays down. You're not going to see it. Um, don't be, I bet everything guys. I've bet rugby. I've bet professional video games. I've bet it, it, soccer. You can find, you can find things uh, with an edge on soccer. So we're looking for uh, under two and a half goals. So I mean, let me go back to find its main. So I'll just type in uh, M-A-I-N-Z. So here's bet us. And then this is against Freiburg, Freiburg. And then under two and a half at plus 132, it's the main line right here. The station would have me bet on my bankroll $255. I'll get frisky with this. I'll put $200 down. Just to find out what the max is, if you typed in 2000 the max bet would be $500. So I always find that interesting. That's another nice little feature if you use BetUS and you don't know that. Just type in an egregious amount and you'll find out what they'll let you max bet. So we're going to take this under here for 200 bucks. Boom, there we go. So there's an offshore book. I still have a very large rollover here with BetUS that I have to work through. I think it's like 15,000. So this helps to, uh, to have this. So boom, 200 and save the bet. So there we go. Mango Golf asks wants to know, does A-Train work well for global books? I, it, it does, uh, in my opinion, it does. Um, just to give you guys an example of the books that are right now currently available on A-Train Station. Um, for offshore books that I would use, obviously bet online, bet us, they do have Bovada. I'm really limited on Bovada. I don't go after it as much low vigs. Another book that I like to use for offshore. Um, they have a lot of others that I don't use like Leo Vegas, Ladbrokes. Um, my booking next bet would be another one. Again, I'm super limited there. And then I have to make an account eventually with super bets. Um, I'm excited to use them. So that's what's going on. The other cool feature, guys, for the station, if you're not used to seeing this, what's completely different than Odds Jam is you can customize the weightings to figure out your no-vig fair odds. So what I mean by that is we don't know how Odds Jam calculates their no-vig fair odds. They, they don't tell us. Here at the station, this is completely customizable. So I this is default settings, but I agree with a lot of this in terms of we want Pinnacle to be a five. We want we think they're the, the smartest in the classroom, so we want to really heavily rely on them. Bet Online's a two. We want to use them. Low Vig, also another offshore book. They're pretty sharp, so a 1.25. Anything that's a one is a default. Anything that's under a one, we're still taking their uh, readings into account, but they're not as sharp as other books. So that's the Bet Rivers, the My Bookie. I know this because they are really easy to make money off of. There are certain markets I'm sure they're kind of sharp or competitive in, but for the most part, they're pretty dumb. So uh, that's what's different. Everyone that has the station can customize that themselves. If you wanted to delete everything and just put a five at Pinnacle, you can do that. That's the cool part is you understand the transparency of this tool and how we're getting the no vig fair odds. That's the cool part about the tool. Um, all right, so as we go back into, let's see, baseball here. Um, if you wanted to, this is another way on FanDuel. Like, we already bet Pena on singles, so then obviously you would take his over on hits. You know, that's another way to kind of go about that. 
Obviously, too, on the right-hand side, guys, we don't look at market width here. This is the withhold percentage. So um, anything that's under 5% is really good, but we can still find sharp plays with the high percentage. That's basically what the sports book is making off of this play um, off of you. So one catches my eye right here, Bobby Portis over 11 and a half boards. This is for tomorrow. We like that green eight. That means Pinnacle has odds for this. So as we scroll down, um, Sportsbet and FanDuel have this at plus 115. Pinnacle sees this at minus 111. So we're going to go over to FanDuel and we're going to smack this for tomorrow's NBA game. Um, also, I already bet the boost today on FanDuel. Make sure that you bet the boost every single time. They overwhelmingly have positive EV on their boosts. Before I forget what the hell we're betting, we're betting over 11 and a half boards over there. So over 11 and a half boards means we need 12 boards for Bobby Portis at plus 115. The station would have me wager $275. I probably can't even bet that over here. No, they'll let me bet $87. So that's what I'll bet. Um, but the boost today is about Curry and Fox, I believe. And I already bet this. Um, they won't let me bet it again. But this is a good boost. I like this. Um, FanDuel is one of the few sports books that their boosts here, pre-made boosts, have positive EV. All right, let me go into Dinger Tuesdays right now. Let me go into the promos. I just completely missed it. It was right there. Let's go back to MLB. Let's opt in. So, guys, if you don't know, this is a great promo that they run. Um, basically, you bet $25 for someone to go yard, and then for every home run hit in that game, you get a $5 bonus bet. Um, I'll usually bet a couple different guys. Um, the maximum that you can receive, though, in bonus bets is $25. Um Today's weather conditions for Dinger Tuesday is not favorable to the hitters, but I do like the Dodgers-Nationals game, particularly the Dodgers. Uh, they're going up against Patrick Corbin, a lefty. The weather conditions are fair. They're fine. And I really like Will Smith and maybe even Mookie Betts, maybe one of those guys to go long. So I'm going to go over here, and then we're just going to go to click uh, hit a home run. Now, what I should do and what I will do, this is more of just a me bet. This isn't maybe necessarily plus EV. We'll go over to uh, the Dodger game down here. And then I'll look at player home runs. And then we'll go all the way down the bottom for Will. Um, huh. They don't have their lines on FanDuel for Will. That's kind of lame. So then for Mookie... Mookie, you know, it's not like we're getting a huge edge here, guys. You know, it's it's similar to Pinnacle. It's it's very similar to Bet Online. I just like the matchup and the weather conditions more or less. So we're gonna throw twenty five on Mookie uh, to go along. Do they have Will Smith on here? <sighs> Unbelievable. And they dropped it down to plus two eighty five. Okay, this isn't plus EV. I wouldn't recommend you tailing this. This is just a personal pick. This is a true degenerate pick but we're going to go for Mookie to go long um, so we'll place that one and then I'll look for maybe a couple other guys uh, on Odds Jam here just to see like for player home runs we'll also do this for pitcher strikeouts guys like I mentioned this is one of my favorite things to do so um, let me take a look over here and see see what I got cooking so in terms of like uh, weather conditions today are park factors. Um, there's a there's an app that I like to use. Uh, it's called Bar Ballpark Pal um, that I really like to use to kind of find out the conditions. They're not great, so I'm really I'm not going to be betting too many guys to go long. But all you're really looking to do here, like here would be one like for Alec Bohm, like he's a clear outlier kind of compared to the rest. Plus five forty over here at Fanduel. You know, again, guys, these are long shots, so I'm. I'm I mean, normally I wouldn't bet $25. Maybe I'd bet like 10 bucks, But um, I do like this one on Bohm just because it's just a bit of an outlier compared to the rest of the market. Or um, Bryce. Bryce is another nice one. Plus 420. Yeah, I like Bryce a little bit more. Um, and I just like it because it's more of a gap between the sports books. I really like that one. So let's go ahead and hit up on... Let's hit Bryce up for one. See if he can go yard. Um... It's compared to most weather conditions. It's there's some games out there like 
the game in Oakland, Cardinals, Oakland, Seattle, Cincinnati, Pirates, Mets, not like great weather conditions tonight for, for people, uh, for the guys to go long. But we're going to bet Harper right now to uh, go deep. And there's some other really good big boppers uh, on this team for Philly that can also hit home runs. So if Bryce doesn't do it, then, you know, we're, we can get some bonus bets back. And then what I like to do with the bonus bets is then put that on, like, alternate pitcher strikeouts down the line for um, kind of just like a little bit more of a lottery ticket. All right, so there's Bryce Harper. Mookie's a personal pick. Bryce, I think, was a kind of a sharper, sharper pick. Um, see if I can find another one maybe in the Dodge in, in the Dodger game. Minute Maid Park, Houston, and Atlanta. That's yeah, let's check out Houston, uh, the Braves and the Astros. Let's see if there's anything there. So all you're doing is just I'm looking, I'm referencing Pinnacle, I'm referencing I'm Pinnacle and Bet Online to see if there's an outlier. Bregman, duh, that looks that looks decent. Um, and we're just kind of scrolling through. We're looking for the bright green right here and see if there is anything there. Um, Jake Myers. Mm, Altuve. Altuve is not terrible. That's not a bad one either. Um, or maybe Acuna. 349, 355. Okay. All right, maybe we'll do Acuna and I'm thinking Altuve or Bregman. I'm going to go Bregman and Acuna. To go long here. So again, guys, these are long shot plays. You're getting a good price compared to the rest of the market, but also you're just taking advantage of this promo. Really, that's what's going on. So I might, this might be the most I'll spend is maybe I'll just pick on four or five guys uh, today because there's just not a ton. And so we'll do Acuna. And it's not because, you know, these are household names and guys that can go long. It's because you're getting a good price just compared to the rest of the market. And we realize, though, that these are severe long shots. So a little sprinkle here, a little sprinkle there. You know, if one of these guys hits a home run and I invest $100, you know, we're going to get our money back or make a slight profit. So my favorite thing in the video that I just dropped yesterday, if you haven't checked it out, it'll be linked in the description, um, is alternate pitcher, um, alternate uh, strikeouts for pitcher props. This is one of my favorite things to do. FanDuel is very sharp on the main line pitcher strikeouts, but their algorithm is way off compared to everybody else for the main line for alternate strikeouts. So right here for like Ronaldo Lopez, his main line's at four and a half, right? FanDuel agrees with Bet Online and Pinnacle. They are all around the same. But for some reason, if we go to alternate strikeouts, like his over six and a half, I wouldn't bet this because you can get this at a better price at Bet Online or Bet Bet Three Six Five, excuse me. But like they're just Fanduel just starts to really drift off. So let's find. So I'll, all I'll do is I'll go through every game, and I'll just look to see is there any pitchers today that it's just like crazy, crazy compared to everybody else. So not here in the Orioles game. So we'll try to find one or two here to see. To kind of guys give you guys a really good idea. My first example in the video that I dropped on Monday was really good um, in terms of just finding something egregious. This one isn't terrible. Ryan Weathers over six and a half. Again, these are long shots, guys. Don't uh, unload the bankroll on these plays. Just a little sprinkle here or there is fun. Um, or if you want to put this in like a round robin, just check out the Phillies pitcher, Ranger Suarez. Nope. Um, I'm not going to go on Gomber. I, I mean, I'll check Gomber here. No, nah, he doesn't have anything. And, you know, this is all I'll basically do is I'll just look through every game and just quickly look at alternate lines. Um, maybe one here on, who's this on? This is on Savali. Eh, it's okay. So, so far we're not finding it. But this is just something that you guys can do um, just to kind of find some value. Uh, Operant, do you use Chalkboard at all? I haven't used Chalkboard. Um, I've heard, though, it can be beneficial. I need to kind of look into it and try it out. Um, Road on here if you want over 6.5 in the Yankees game. Pretty good at Bet365. That's really good value compared to Bet Online. So if you have a Bet365 account, that's fantastic. Um, we're kind of, no pun intended, we're striking out right now. Let's look at the Pirates, Mets. See if Jared Jones. Um, okay, so here might be one. 
like Jared Jones over eight and a half strikeouts. He's at plus 500 compared to plus 348. We already bet the under on Quintana earlier in the stream. It was our first bet, so I'm not going to touch that. Um, but there's not really any value here between it for some of his overs. So let's go with Jared Jones right now. Of course, I end up finding my hometown Pirates that I want to bet on. Um, who for right now are playing very well, but I know that's going to end at some point. But it's fun while it lasted. Fun while it's here. All right, and we're looking at, I believe, is it over eight and a half? Let's double check this. Jared Jones. Yeah, over eight and a half. I'm not going to get crazy on this, guys. This is just like betting on a, on a home run. I'm interested to see how much they'll let me bet. They'll only bet $75. I won't do that. Uh, I'll do like 30 bucks. And then this is just, you know, you're kind of getting a sharp play here, uh, betting this at over, uh, over on a strikeout. So if you want to get more frisky than that, feel free. Damn, we're almost at an hour? <sighs> Time flies by. Sleeper fires too. All right, perfect. So let's um, let's hop over to the fantasy optimizer because I definitely want to put together a Taco Tuesday slip for you guys, and uh, we can kind of get a look at what's what's popping over on the optimizer right now. Now, <laughs> I have uh, leave a comment down below, guys, if you feel I don't like the fantasy score. I don't like using the fantasy score on the optimizer for the NBA. I don't. I don't find it helpful. Because I just don't think any of the books are really sharp on fantasy scores. But I will go after, you know, some of these um, CS2 League of Legends players. M uh, for NBA, if it's like made threes here for, for Kobe White, Trey Young, like, okay, this would be something I would want to get into. But let me go ahead and open up prize picks here and let's get into it. So again, guys, Friday, roughly same time I'm going to announce it, but we're going to we're going to be streaming again. Stop by. Hopefully provide you some value, get you some free plays. You can kind of see both Odds Jam and A-Train Station um, and what those platforms have for you. So we're obviously going to take Reimer tonight over. Big, big night for my Penguins. If they want to have a sliver of a chance to get into the playoffs, we need Montreal to pepper Reimer tonight with some shots. So that's the easy one. So then I'm just going to look at uh, Brute Monster and... Over on, we'll just take his first over two and a half uh, on his headshots. And then we'll see if there's, do some strikeout combos here. Maybe Hicks, the rebounds with Draymond. We were already going to bet that. I, I like that a lot. Um, so Draymond and, and Sabonis. So we're going to take the top play here. Normally, guys, when it comes to like the fantasy optimizer, the one rule of thumb that I like to give you guys is like Brute Monster here, over nine and a half headshots for the first two maps. I would put him on two separate slips, and that's it. I don't like to be overexposed and have him on four, five, or six different slips because if he loses, it's a huge risk or risk reward for me. Um, so we're going to go to Brute Monster here for CS2. So over nine and a half. We're going to go over to the NBA then. We're going to grab... I like grabbing, I have a little bit more maybe confidence on just like mainline um, plays, like the, the basketball plays with rebounds. I, I just have a little bit more confidence. So it was him and Sabonis to grab more rebounds. So we like that. Um, we're going to go with the CS2 player right here to go under. Obviously, too, like if you see Brute Monsters playing, like if you see a zero tenacity um, going up against the other team. If the other team has like the under compared to his over, we like that, though I think prize picks might have negated that type of correlation. We'll go with Kobe White and Trey Young over on their threes. So let's go to So here we'll take more on threes. And I'll put together a five pick slip here like we mentioned. I'll grab this last CS2 guy, Jambo. We'll uh we'll snag him. And so we want his over 28. Over 28. Okay. All right, guys. And then uh, naturally, I, I can't believe it. I don't know if this is 25 or 20. I can't remember what it is. Boom, 25. So when we go over to the entries here, here's the entry right here that I'm on. If you want to tail it, feel free. If you want to turn this just to a two-pick play, that's fine. I haven't found the sauce really for DFS. With prize picks and underdog, unless it's a correlated type of slip. So this could definitely, I would put a lot of my money on hitting three of five 
and I'll and I won't make any money. I'll make like twelve bucks back. So, um, yeah, there. I'm not sure, uh, Scotty. I think I'm. I'm pretty sure Prize Picks is pretty good about making sure that Taco Tuesday is every every Tuesday. Um, I might have missed the one earlier today, but you just kind of kind of click through. Or they'll or make sure you follow them on Twitter as well because they'll let you know what's going on. All right, we're we're closing in on an hour, guys. So if you want to see any types of plays, you want to see me go over any types of certain books or the state that you live in, let me know. I'm probably gonna go back um, to the sports books page here at Odds Jam, and we're just gonna go to Plus EV, and we're gonna see if we can find a couple of plays. Mm -mm. But I really appreciate you guys stopping by tonight. Um, oh. <laughs> of course, of course, the wings. So I'm from Pittsburgh, so I'm a diehard Penguins fan. So it's going to be really difficult for me to bet the wings minus one and a half when I, I need them to lose in order for my Penguins to win. So if you want to make this play over at BetDSI, this is a sharp play. I'm not just because I'm a fan of my Penguins and I'm not rooting. I'm just not going to root for the Red Wings. I could easily tell myself that I'm costing myself money when the Wings win five to two tonight, but I'm just I'm not going to do it because same with like the Canadians. Um, the Canadians might win two nothing tonight. I'm just not doing it. I don't like this though as much because Bet DSI aligns with Bet Online, and while Bet Online isn't sharp on every single market in the history of sports betting, um, I. I just don't like it. So thanks, Donovan. I appreciate you, brother. And I appreciate you guys stopping by. Tune in on Friday, roughly same time. Um, if I can find on Sahara Bets, like this, uh, part of uh, Podzemensky, butcher the hell out of that name. This is a could be a sharp play here. Um, but if I can find another Sahara Bets, same game parlay, I would love that. So Harrison Barnes. But we already got him on here, so I can't do that. Um, this is a sharp plan, Bovada. I, I can't get much action on Bovada for CJ McCollum. This is a clear outlier under 31 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. You can get that plus money at Bovada. Um, I had a good relationship for, with Bovada for about a year and a half, and now I can barely get anything down over there. Um, same with player prop bets on ESPN. Bet player prop bets, guys, is going to be the first market that you're going to get limited the fastest on. I would love, though, right here to put a little little hard rock right here. I would love to do a little round robin here. So my process when I make round robin videos, guys, it's real simple. I'm on the Plus EV page. If I see a purple logo right here, a hard rock, I add it into the slip because hard rock, they're pretty dumb. So here's two. Where would be the third one at? Beautiful. Okay. So we're going to put this together over at Hard Rock right now. Uh, a little th two by three round robin. So let me go down to them down here. This will probably be the last play that we'll do to end the stream. Little round robin right here. Um, they're typically round robins for Hard Rock. They let me bet um, 10 to $15 per play. So it's not a crazy amount. But we are taking the Reds team total over three and a half, a no runs first inning for the Oriole game. So let's go first to the Oriole game. Total runs first inning. We want to make sure we're still getting the same odds. That's why this has an edge. If, it, if the odds have changed not to our favor, then we're not going to make this play. We'll go down to the Reds game against Seattle. And then we're going to scroll all the way over to the right-hand side to team props and then total. Nope, I lied. Maybe just go to game lines and it might be down here at the bottom. Yeah, nope. Yeah, Reds total runs. Here we go. Over three and a half plus 130. And then the final play is Trey Lyles over six and a half points. And that's fine. I'm all good with that. Plus, it's a good play to bet online. So we're looking for him over six and a half so we'll go to NBA, Kings Warriors, player props, offensive points, Trey Lyles over six and a half. All right, so then obviously, guys, the sports books always want to push parlays to you. So the first option right here is parlays. We don't want that. You have to scroll down and you can't see that because, well, I'm in the way. Um, so let me move myself out of the way here real quick. So I'll move myself up here. So the first play option is always the three-bet parlay. 
You come down here to round robins. Two by three. So remember um, what we're wagering here. We're looking to wager. You don't want to put what you want to wager in totality. So if you want to wager $30, don't put $30. You're going to put $10 right here because $10 is going to give you $30 down here. Okay. So that's like, a, that's, that's a key thing. It's a tricky thing. You're like, oh, when I want to bet 30, if we put 30 in here, then it's going to say, do you want to wager $90? So I know that they'll let me bet probably 15. I'll try for 20. Um, looks like the, ah, uh, no, we're okay. So it exceeds it. The problem with the desktop on hard rock is they don't tell you, um, how much you can bet on, on the mobile app. They'll tell you the maximum amount you can wager. So it's just a guessing game, which is really, really dumb. I can't stand it. Okay. They won't let me bet 15. Let's try 12, please. Okay, $12. So I'm in for $36 total. No runs first inning in the Orioles game. Over three and a half for the Reds team total. And then Trey Lyles for the Kings to score seven points or more. So there's our round robin slip. So guys, um, yeah, we're getting into the close to the hour. So I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, stop by next, this upcoming Friday, same time. I'll announce it uh, and let you guys know kind of what's going on. But um, Dwayne, I appreciate you, Dwayne. I really hope the Habs... Get it done. Um, the Penguins put themselves in a really bad hole, though, all season long. So it's a miracle that they're even one game left in the season. They have a slim chance to make the playoffs. But appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, and if nothing else, guys, we'll catch you on the stream on Friday. Take it easy.